So my friends would be yelling, pizza, pizza, pizza. That led to me signing up for this class called Acting On. No, you should absolutely do it. Like it's such a great program. I don't know what we're doing or why we're doing it, but we're doing it. Join me on the floor of my childhood bedroom um, for the life update. Because there's a plane. Do you hear the plane? It's gone. So people have been bothering me a lot more recently to post something, um, which is valid. And I probably should have posted something sooner, but life. So I'm home for the holidays and I've been running into a lot more people recently who've like watched my videos. Um, because I went and visited Stonehill a couple of weeks ago and a lot of like there were students like in the hallways who were like oh my god I've watched every single one of your videos and I was like people still watch that um and then I had lunch with a Dartmouth 28 last week so 28s are like the people that just got admitted like that will be the last class that I get to see because these people will be like first years when I'm in my final year which will be next year or I guess yeah, it'll be, that will be September of 2024 will be the beginning of my last year and then these people will be first years then. And so I'm like, oh my god, like, I'm getting old. Um, which, I'm 20 now. Um, anyways. Um, to go to today's, this is gonna be a little bit of a life update video. So I asked you all for questions like ages and ages ago on my YouTube, like, community forum. Um, and then I also asked my friends to send me some questions, some spicy questions, because I feel like they know me best. They know what I should, should or shouldn't be putting out on the internet. Um, so we'll just we'll just get right into it. Um, so question number one is what have you been up to? Um, so I'll give you guys the scoop. Um, so I completed my first year. Um, I completed my second year. Um, my second year ended this um, June. So. Um, 2022 to 23 was my second year um, and then this summer um, I worked for Discord as a software engineer um, some of you might have heard of the app Discord some of you like might use it um, I like personally wasn't a big user before I like joined the company um, I'm still not I know but real um, but that was a lot of fun so I spent um, June July August um, on my internship um, got to travel a lot because of that so I got to go to San Francisco um, we kind of flew this out. Um, there's, so the internship was mostly remote, um, which is why I stayed on my campus. Um, but they did fly us out to San Francisco for a week, um, give us a hotel room, like had us do like stuff at the office, meet everyone, all of that. Um, and then I kind of came back to like Dartmouth's campus to finish up the rest of my internship. Um, came home in September for the first two weeks. So I was home for a week and then I kind of just missed the first week of classes to be home for another five days because I just it just made sense at that point it had been like a long stretch before I come to India um and then so that started my third year and so in September I started my third year um that's going to be my second last year because it's a four-year degree and then finished my first um of three terms of my third year and I'm just like home for the holidays um and I'm like still looking for stuff for next summer um kind of have some have some things in mind um yeah um we'll be not revealing that right now just for um, like confidentiality purposes um could also go back to discard that is an option someone this like is a great segue into the next question someone asked about like future plans um what do you want to do like software engineering quant um i was considering like kind of trading as a career um but i wouldn't be interested in like the trading part of it i would be interested in doing software engineering for high frequency trading companies um that's like a i think it's more challenging than regular tech but at least for me like the work at discord was amazing um it was like really cool because i actually got to like work on features that are now live in the app um i don't know what i'm legally allowed to say but if you go to discord there's like a new feature where you can change your app icon um it's only available for nitro users like the team that i worked on was um making features only for paying users like that was our team's like specific goal um so that like i worked on that like i did a lot of those screens that you can see on the app um so that was like a really cool part about working in software um but I'm also like at this point still looking to challenge myself, um, like find more opportunities, um, try to like go where I learn most. Um, and then kind of a lot of people also ask related to that, like do you want to stay in the US, do you want to come back? Um, I don't know honestly, um, 
I like I would like to use like the visa that I get to work after I graduate so like um, the US government kind of gives you a one year OPT to work and then also if you've done a STEM degree there's a two year extension on top of that so essentially after I graduate um, I have three months to stay three years to stay in the US and like work um, so I definitely want to use that and then I don't know I don't know where like life is gonna take me I like joke with my friends and this is completely a joke but um, like it goes like oh if I like fall in love with someone I'll just like follow them wherever they go like no matter where in the world because I'm that kind of a like simp um, but if not like I, I do think that I would like to move back here at some point um, yeah I also like one of my dreams is to like hop around Europe for a couple of years I think it'd be really cool to like get a job with like a company that's multinational and then be able to like kind of live someplace in Europe like travel a lot of those things on weekends and stuff um, I know I'm super interested by like culture and like the more like parts of like for example like Switzerland, like Finland, Denmark, um, the Netherlands, like kind of that part of Europe. Um, I think they have super interesting culture and they're consistently like some of the world's happiest countries. Um, and so like one of my dreams is like go live there and like see. Um, and this is like such a tangent but one of my team members in my internship this summer actually like lived and worked in Europe and for a couple of years. Um, and so like she shared a lot of that um like what it was like um the one thing is that you do have to take a, like a major pay cut if you want to move to europe um because no one really pays software engineers as much as the us does and like to some extent canada but still like the us is where i mean you also spend proportionally more and money is in everything um so i'm kind of just you know for a couple of years i want to do the like work in the us thing and then we'll see we'll see where life takes me um but i get that question a lot like if you'd like, that is a top question I get asked is do you want to stay? Um, okay, now I just kind of want to do some like fun questions because um, I feel like it's been two years. There's like a lot that um, has kind of gone on. Um, so one of my friends asked me to answer favorite semester in college and least favorite semester in college. And so my favorite, I would say it's between um, sophomore winter. So I'll be like second year winter, beginning of this year and um, junior fall. So that's like September to November of this year and I think those were my two favorite semesters um even though I was like in pretty high classes both semesters I think those were just like super like fulfilling super fun um this still like new roommate um she's one of the best things that ever happened to me um I've had so much fun like living with her um kind of same thing uh sophomore winter I had a new roommate and it was like the best thing ever um and just like overall like just like had time to socialize, had time to have fun. And, um, my like sophomore winter was the first time I tried skiing. Um, it was a horrible experience, honestly. Like it's not as glamorous as it looks. Um, I'm sure it's a lot of fun if you know how to ski. But like for me, all I did was I fell down the slope. Like my friends who were trying to teach me would stand at the top of the slope and yell pizza, which is like pizza is when you put your skis like this, you break. So my friends would be yelling pizza, 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 and I would go down the slope and try to break and not break and fall and then like kind of just tumble down the slope and yeah that was my skating experience but that did motivate me to sign up for lessons this winter so like this Jan upcoming January February March I'm gonna be taking actual skiing lessons um which is gonna be a lot of fun and I figured like I might as well like do it you know like it's it's so much cheaper in college it's like nearly free um at Dartmouth if you want to learn how to ski um, cause you can get like a financial aid discount, um, through the like office of like PE. Oh, also like kind of this summer. So after I finished my second year, I had this kind of like mid college crisis where I was like, I'm halfway done with college and I haven't like done any of the things that I want to do. Um, and so like I made a list of things that I want to finish in like, in a very rogue, like turn of events that led to me signing up for this class called acting one this semester, which like has been my second favorite class at Dartmouth, honestly, that I've ever taken. Like it was amazing um I think pushed me to like like explore a very like different side of things because I feel like that's from, that for me is something that I never thought I could act like for me like that's way more difficult than writing like a software program or like something that I just would never do um but yeah that's kind of been I think my life since then has been governed by that like mid-college crisis and I'm like trying to do everything that I feel like I like could have done in my first two years um and I have this like big list of all the classes I want to take before I graduate that I'm definitely not getting through um but such is life yeah um so some of the questions I actually put on my iPad because I'm disorganized someone um on YouTube actually asked did you find anything in America that made you say oh I want to like come back to India 
like yeah the food um mm -hmm. there's there's like the food's getting better i think places like boston and like california have really good food um i'm also vegetarian so there's like new hampshire is not like super friendly in terms of that um and like dartmouth food doesn't really cut it for me um in like this dorm i think i think over the summer honestly because i had like more free time because i wasn't taking classes i was working a nine to five internship um, I had more time to like explore other food options. I would eat off campus a lot. Um, there's like burrito place that I would eat at. So yeah, I think my relationship with food has like changed a lot over college. Also, I think my body has changed a lot over college. Like I noticed, like I made a video last summer, and there were comments on it being like, "Oh my god, you look different!" Like blah blah. blah. Um, and like I've yeah, I've gained weight in college, I've lost weight in college. So like food has definitely been like yeah, something I've had to explore for myself. Um, and like. I think it, it's taken me the better part of two years to try to figure out like what is it that I enjoy eating and what is it that like is like healthy enough to sustain me without being like a temporary like oh this is like easily available and it's vegetarian so I'm just gonna eat it. Did you have any expectations versus reality moments in Dartmouth? I feel like I didn't realize how big... Okay let, let me pre preface this by saying that most of like the things lived up to my expectations there was nothing like disappointing. Um, I think it is truly as great of a school as people make it out to be. Um, my professors have been absolutely amazing. Like, it is really true what they say that the department really focuses on the undergrads and the classes are really small. Like, I think my biggest class has been 60 people. Um, and even then, like, the professor knew my name. Like, and they literally take the effort to, like, get to know everyone in the class. Um, we have, like, a take your professor to lunch program. Um, like where there's this really fancy restaurant in town called The Vine and you can get like a voucher from the dean's office um, once per term to take like any of your professors for your classes after lunch. It's like paid for by the college and it's like encouraged students to get to know their profs. Honestly, I have to like admit something. I've never like taken advantage of this. Um, I had like a first year come up to me um, at, like a club meeting um, this term and he was like, oh, I like want to do this program and I want to ask my professor to lunch. But I'm like, I don't know what to expect. Like, I don't know if you should do it. I'm kind of scared. And I was like, no, you should absolutely do it. Like, it's such a great program. You should like make advantage of all, like take advantage of all the resources available. And then I was like, wait a minute. I've never done this. Like, I've been in for two years. So like, to the first year, I was like, thank you for giving me my wake up call. Because next term, I have determined that I will in fact be like getting this voucher and taking one of my professors to lunch. I don't care if it's like awkward in the beginning or whatever. But, um, but it's just like everyone that I know who's done it, and I have friends that do this like every single term. They like go, like go get, get a meal with one of their professors, um, and they like have never said anything bad about it. Like it's just it's a way for you to like I don't know like build a connection with someone, um, and it's free. Did I mention that? Um, and so yeah, I can't remember what the question was. Oh, expectations versus reality. Um, short answer. So yeah, everything has lived up to my expectations. Like it is truly as great as they make it out to be. I think things that I didn't expect were how big Greek life is. Um, Greek life is like fraternities and sororities. And like, I will not explain, like Google it. I feel like I'm just, I've had to explain to so many different people, um, including my parents who still, I think, are wrapping their minds around the concept of Greek life and chats and sororities. And I am in a sorority. Um, I think at any other college I would not be, but at Dartmouth everyone, like almost everyone that I know is affiliated. Um, I think it's like over like 85% of eligible students are in like the Greek system, um, which is just like you join a house and it's supposed to be community, it's like sisterhood or brotherhood. Um, yeah, it like took some like time to figure out how to navigate it and what like role that needed to have in my life. Um, but I think this summer, um, when I was doing my internship, I lived in my sorority house. And so essentially think of it as like a huge house and it has 20 rooms. Um, I think, I hope I'm getting that number right. Um, it's like 20 or 23 maybe rooms for like individual rooms. And so I was living in a house with 20 other girls um, who I actually knew only one of them. Like I was only friends with one of them before I like lived in the house. Cause I was just, I joined this like community and I was so uninvolved with it. Um, like all my friends at that point were inside this community, um, except for one. And so that was an experience in the summer. I think the summer made me more open to the idea of the system. And like, I then really started to appreciate like, kind of, especially at a place like Dartmouth when you're so isolated from like all of civilization and like, you know, there's nothing really, like everything shut like past 10 p.m. There's not really much of life outside campus. I think that's when I started to appreciate the value of this community of like, 
kind of official sisterhood or whatever but i think that was like a kind of like whoa expectations versus reality moment because like no one really like tells you like you don't really like i think especially as an international you don't really know what the system is um but yeah now it's like been one of the like you know like most positive influences in uh, my time here um like one of the things we do is like when you join you get assigned a big who's supposed to be like your big sister in the house and like supposed to kind of like help you like meet people and i wasn't like i'm still not super close with my big but then this year because now i'm like a third year i got a little um because you like join these communities in your second year typically and oh my god like obsessed um like actual like she's i feel like she's actually my sister um from like another like life it's been like um kind of a it's like a cute it's also like a mentorship thing i think that's like the system that i didn't even think about has like been a super positive influence in my life so that was like my long randy rant in the greek system at dartmouth um next question this guy was asking um how are you doing at dartmouth thank you for asking that's such a sweet question i'm doing good there have been ups and downs i think the best way that i can describe college is like all the best moments of your life and all the worst moments of your life just like squished together and then for Dartmouth like our terms are 10 weeks long so we have three 10 week terms every year and so they're just like squished together into 10 weeks and then once it's over you're like wait a minute what happened um so it's, it's super intense and sometimes it's just like hard to like distinguish like kind of all the little pieces of everything that because like time moves so fast and so much happens um but yeah that's college that's part of like okay this is an interesting question i kind of want to address it um it says how do you face how did you face cultural diversity do you think that your choices were accepted and respected i i like yes my choices that have been accepted and respected i think oftentimes like one thing that i can think of that comes up a lot is the fact that i'm vegetarian and i was raised that way but also i think for me i'm not religious like i'm agnostic and so for me it's like more of a personal ethical choice that i choose to make on behalf of the environment and it comes up a lot like i'll go out with a group of friends um because also i think most of my friends are not indian at this point and i think being vegetarian is something that's more common in south asian cultures um versus like in i think especially in like kind of like you know new hampshire it's pretty rare um and so i'll like go out with people and it'll be like a group of like 10 15 people and i'll be the only one at the table who's like i can't eat anything with meat in it um and i think yes it's always been accepted like i think i'm the one who worries more about like am i being an inconvenience to other people like by forcing them to order something that's not like um and i remember one time we all went to this like hot pot place um where they like give you like a bowl of like soup in it and you cook your own stuff and they had to get a separate bowl entirely just for me like everyone ate from it but they had to order one separate bowl like where people couldn't put meat in it um because like you'd kind of decide where to put in it um so we had like four bowls on the table and one had to be entirely vegetarian um and i think i worry more about it being an inconvenience to people whereas other people kind of take it in stride and they're like yeah of course like um or even things like i don't know when it comes to cultural diversity even like i never like like i'll get like one time like this was like the valley first road and i remember i like wore my thing and i dressed up to like go to this we like there is a pretty big event and my roommate was just like are you dressed up for halloween and i was like hmm like i don't know how to respond to this and i'm like i was like no it's just like a festival and then i kind of explained and she's like okay um yeah i also like wasn't super close to my first year roommate and so it was kind of just like that made it more awkward i so i had lunch with like two stone house friends last week and all we did the entire time was like complain about how like we had asked weird questions like how is your english so good and like little things like that that just like are irritating sometimes i think you just like learn to deal with it and you also learn to realize that people are coming from a place that like they genuinely don't know um and so they're asking not to be rude but they're just like asking to ask um in terms of yeah like other choices i think it's more just like being confident in yourself i think as long as like you're kind of secure in yourself and you're confident in your choices um yeah it kind of works itself out but it's definitely like been tricky to navigate at times and i think I think this like holiday actually meeting so many people like who like relate to my experience or like meeting like reconnecting with like stone friends or otherwise has made me realize like this is such a common experience like it's not just me um 
And so that's something that you just like everyone faces um, as an international, or not like not to generalize, but I think most people go through this in some in some form or the other. So I'm gonna end with a question that might actually be useful to some people. Um, somebody asks any IB tips, and I'm guessing it's because like like exam season is coming up, and like a lot of people are like finishing up with schools and stuff. Um, I would say with the IB, just like where I remember is just like the rubric in thought. Treat the rubric like it's your like. I don't know, like whatever prized possession you have. Um, I feel like all the marking is like, I don't know, because sometimes you like write an essay or like something and you'll think it's really good, but when you actually look at the criteria it's being graded against, you're just like, wait a minute, I didn't actually cover any of this. You're like, even with like internal assessments and stuff in labs for like physics, chemistry, whatever, I would write what I thought was a good draft. But then when I would look at the rubric, I would kind of just realize like, wait a minute, I'm not really like, Kind of hitting all the points that they want me to hit and this is what i'm going to be marked against um so that was like a game changer just like literally go find the syllabus go find what you're going to be graded on and make sure you like touch upon every one of those criteria somehow um and then for exams i would just say like fast papers like huge um honestly like my teachers used to give fast paper questions in the mock sometimes um which i like didn't know until after mock so um but yeah just like go online like do lots of practice questions um there's like textbooks with practice questions in them because I feel like you can kind of passively read material again and again, but especially for like STEM subjects and things like that. Like you don't really know what you know until you like test yourself and then like you'll fill in the gaps in your knowledge that way. So that's it for this video. I'm trying to keep it short because every time I've tried to film this, it's been like an over an hour. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, I hope it like, yeah, just a fun holiday chat. Um, drop more questions in the comments below if you have them. Comment if there's like anything specific that you want to see and I'll like try to do my best to like do more like informal or like casual just like here's some like things that you might want to know kind of videos um but yeah 